Hi everybody, Aaron from bushhoggingservices.com and Otter Creek Farm on uh, social media. And today is part two of websites for bushhogging service businesses. And we're going to be talking more about the, some of the mechanics of how to uh, create a page, arrange a page, change out an image, uh, things of that nature. Now, the goal here is not to teach you how to be a web developer. Uh, what I'm trying to do is remove the mystery of what goes on behind the scenes. So some of you can look at this and say, I can handle this. I can do this. I'm willing to invest my time and efforts into learning this. Others are going to look at that and say, hey, that's great, but it's not for me, which is okay. Part one was this higher view, kind of structural view, and now we're kind of going to dig into those weeds that I mentioned. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I do want to say, I was, I, I was just doing what I thought was a recording. I went on for five minutes and actually hadn't pressed record, so I had a practice round um, to get you this content. But I wanted to show you two tools that are important to this process. Uh, the first one is GT Metrics, and you can see our website has an A, uh, which takes time to you know to get done. But with some of the plugins, specifically the Rank Math plugin that you find inside of WordPress, right? Uh, when we go here and we go back to the dashboard, right, and you log in. And you can see that we have Rank Math here. This is a great tool, a great plugin. It does cost money, but it is a, a very important plugin to help you uh, get good scores like this. And sometimes, if you have a web page, people will email you and say, "Hey, you know, great website, but we noticed that you have this problem and that problem." They just take your URL and they put it in something like this, and then they come in here and they look at the results and they. They basically email you what is being uh, communicated to them here in hopes that you'll hire them to fix the problem, right? And then the second um, resource that I would say is Page Speed Insights. And you can just Google that. And you stick your uh, URL in here and it comes back and it measures the speed at which your page is available, both in mobile and in desktop. Now, today, there's more people typically searching on mobile than desktop. So you want to make sure that your website is optimized for mobile and I'll show you what that means once we get into the Divi editor and how you can look at pages uh, like it would be on a mobile device or a tablet or a desktop. So there's a couple different views that are available to you in that in that uh, in the editor. All right, so we're going to just going to close these and then we're going to go into uh, WordPress and just so you know uh, to get into WordPress, once WordPress is installed, the login page is your domain, uh, followed by, and I'm just going to type it in the search bar. You don't put it in the search bar, it actually goes in the top bar, right? So www or https colon slash slash bushhoggingservices.com, and then you put a forward slash and you go wp admin. That is the default login screen. Uh, for all WordPress instances. It's also the default login that every hacker in the world knows to uh, to look for. So if they want to try to hack your website, they're going to go there and that's where they're going to begin. You can have that URL changed to something else that only you know or um, something that a hacker wouldn't know. And if they go to your website and they type that in and they can't find it and then they get a page not, page not found, they're going to know that you've done something. Your security is above average. They're going to move on to somebody else. So if you get involved with a, uh, a web development company or somebody that knows how to do this, ask them about changing your login to something that is not standard for a little bit more cybersecurity. All right, so uh, let's go to the dashboard. So this is what you might see when you log in. These widgets here can be moved around. You can kind of reorganize this, that's great. Um, you can see we have the Google Site Kit installed. These, this is a plugin. If you remember from part one, the, there's some plugins here. Some of these are defaults and some of these are plugins. Like this is a plugin. Um, Rank Math is a plugin. Divi is a theme that's installed, right? So uh, plugins are great. It shows you a little bit. Uh, the Google Site Kit shows you some traffic information. Organic search results. 81% of the traffic on the website is an organic search result. That's pretty killer. That means. I don't need to pay for advertising unless I really want to do something local and niche uh, because I'm drawing enough attention uh, through the SEO efforts over the last 28 days. Now, I could pay and drive up the total visitors or I can be happy with the SEO content and maybe do some niche advertising or niche marketing or some other something else perhaps not even online. 
So uh, that's interesting. So now let's look at editing a page and how do we do that? Uh, the first question is how do you create a page? So we have posts, which remember are blog posts, and then we have pages, which are the actual web pages. So when we look at the website, um, first of all, you go up here and go to visit site. It'll take you to the site, right? This is a web page. This is a web page. These are web pages, right? So when we create a page, that's what we're what we're doing. And I don't know what that little thing flickering is. That's new. I'm going to have to take a look at that. But we're going to ignore that for now. We're going to focus on the mission, which is to uh, look at web pages. So if we're going to create a page, uh, first of all, you can go in here and you can see all pages, how many were published, how many do you have in draft, what's considered pillar content or the most important content that you're signaling to Google and the search engines. Hey, I really want you to focus on my pillar content. This is really what we're all about. Not everything can be a pillar, so don't try it. You can change some of the uh, information displayed down here by going to your screen options over here. We can close that. And then if we were to uh, create a new page, we can go to add new. And you'll see we get a couple options. To... Uh, looks like we need to do an update of some sort. So uh, I'll take care of that later. We're going to move on without that. So uh, when you come in here, the very first view that you get, this is a default WordPress page. And if you knew how to write code, you could actually code it here. You could type out a little something, put a little you know, uh, picture in here and things like that, which is super challenging. What you want to do is use the Divi Builder. This is why you want to get, uh, what I highly recommend is Divi, and, and we get nothing from Divi. It's just, I use it on all of our websites, and it has allowed me as an amateur to do things that a lot of, um, uh, you know, professionals used to be the only ones that were able to do it, right? So, uh, let me see. Okay, so it's loading here. So when you create a new page, you've got choices here, right? You can choose from an existing page and you can basically just recreate it, right? Which is, I, you know, it's, it's a great way of doing things, right? You, you know a page, you like it, you can uh, select from pages or posts. If you're creating uh, a page or a post, you can you can select the last blog post and then it brings it in. And then all you do is start replacing the, the text and the images, right? You can look at, you can look at saved layouts. Uh, in this case, I don't have any saved layouts because I always just copy one of the old pages and replace the content. Or you can start with uh, a layout, basically a, like a package, right? You've got all of these packages in here, so you might you know, click on businesses and then it filters out these packages. And then you can look at, uh, let's do consulting. It doesn't mean anything to me, but you can see what uh, types of pages they offer. So this one's got a bio about them. And I probably wouldn't select that for a bush hogging business. So let's see what else we got down here. Services, let's look at services. So here we have some service web uh, site templates. Right, so let's look at construction. Maybe that's kind of close to what we do. So we have contact services, blog, about, service, projects, portfolio, landing and home. That's a pretty good group of pages. You know, I, I like those. I like to have a portfolio. I want people to see the work that I can do. This layout is nice. It's appealing. Um, we know that these pages are going to be responsive in that they're going to change size and shape for, um, you know, different size screens like cell phones. So I'm not going to install this because I don't want to overlay something that uh, is already in place, but you can absolutely start with this and all these pages become available to you and the styling, the design, the, uh, the user experience is all going to be consistent through this starting point. So it makes life so, so, so much easier um, to use somebody else's talent to be able to do that. You'll see that this created an auto draft. Now I already have a page in drafts, so I'm not going to utilize this piece of it. But what I do want to show you um, to give you a rough idea is the fact that web pages are built in a grid system, right? And that grid system consists of rows and columns. And the number of rows and columns that you have can vary by the choices that you make. So if I wanted to create a new section, I can click this. It's going to be a regular section. Uh, everything in here is color coded to give you an indication as to what level you're working with. 
and then you can add uh, child levels below the upper level. So if I wanted to have a section that had four columns, you can see this now has four columns. I can insert four different things into this. And when I go look at it on the page, I'm going to have four nice blocks. And then I can edit almost everything about those blocks individually, or I can edit those blocks and I can apply that styling across the row. I can apply it to the page, right? So when you click on this gray plus sign, you now see that you get a list of uh, options for what are the types of things that need to go or potentially could go into that cell? And you have all of these choices. And I'm just going to pick text uh, because it's an easy one. And it brings up the text editor window and styling as well, right? So I'm, I'm looking at this. I can type in some text here, you know, and you notice that you're not seeing it over there. So the changes that you're making here, you can't see there. That's what makes this the old style. The new style is the visual editor, which is what we will go to. But I want you to see how the foundation is built in the background with different boxes and different styles. Now, I can actually take this uh, text and I can, I can slide it up. I can slide it over. I can overlap it uh, with the box next to it. I can do all kinds of things by changing with the spacing and the margins and, you know, uh, you know, the, the shading and the shadows and the colors and all of those different types of things. So um, let's go from here to the front. And if you notice up here, it says build on the front end. So that's what we're going to do. But I'm going to go to a page that I already created, so I'm not working from scratch just to speed things up. So I'm going to go back to all pages. I'm going to discard my edits. I'm going to go back to the draft content and you'll see this is, it's already been saved. It's an auto draft. I can hit trash. I can throw it away just that easily. I can look in the trash if I need to recover something. But what I'm going to do now is uh, I can click here and go straight to the visual builder. I can click edit and I can go back to the screen that we were just looking at and then go to the visual builder. So why not just jump straight to the visual builder? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on that. And it's going to pull this up for me. Now, I know that I'm in the editor mode because you see right here, it says exit visual builder. If I look at one of these other pages, it says enable visual builder. So I can click that and then I can start editing on the page. I also know that I'm logged in and WordPress is active because I can see this bar across the top. If I'm logged out, this bar is not visible. There's no editing uh, options at that point when, once you're logged out. So now I am logged in, I'm in visual uh, builder mode, and I'm just kind of looking down the page, right? And some of that, oh, it's grayed out. Why is that? We'll talk about that in a minute. This content here looks great, right? Looks appropriate. I've got a, uh, what appears to be a video, I've got a map, uh, kind of interesting shape here. You know, how did that happen? You can see I can roll over different areas and I get these boxes that pop up that allow me to do some uh, adjusting of the margins. I can keep coming down. Look, this one's two column. This one is a contact form. Uh, how do you put a contact form in there? That's interesting. And then uh, we've got a little sidebar content here. We keep coming down. We've got more now. Now we've got a grid. All right. So we've got a three by uh, it's actually a three by three. So three here, there's, uh, there's actually, if you think about that grid system, there's going to be a place here and or an, an option to put a place here. So if I could do that now, I clicked on that and you see, I got a plus sign. So now I can add something below that. So, um, you can adjust the grid. So things are symmetrical, which really looks good, right? This isn't aligned here. I can see that, but you know, there's a way to fix that if I wanted to, and I keep coming down. Ideally, you want about 1,200 words per page, and uh, Rank Math is the type of tool that will tell you, you know, hey, look, you've got 300 words. That's not going to work too well, so, you know, beef up your content, right? Or you don't have enough in, inbound links uh, within your website. You're not linking to other pages and other content, and you're not linking to related content off of your website. So uh, you can kind of imagine how this might look behind the scenes, right? So let's go to the top here. Let me just scroll up. And so this is bush hogging and cedar key. This looks actually like a 
blog post, uh, which is okay. It doesn't matter whether it be a blog or a, a web page. Um, you know, your content is created to deliver value to the visitor, which in turn, uh, Google recognizes and gives you good scores, right? So if I go here and click on the logo, it'll take me to the home page. Let me just look down here real quick. All right, so when I look at this, all right, so what, what am I looking for? I'm actually looking to see what's grayed out and um, the content and see what's similar in content, right? So if I were to uh, look at this now, when I look down here, you've got the three dots, right? And uh, as a reminder, what you can do is just click around. You don't have to be worried about breaking something. You can't really break it. You might delete it, but you can't break it. Um, so click on the three dots and you'll notice that you get a different set of options, right? Now this stuff down here shows up and you'll see you can change the screen view from desktop to tablet to mobile. And when I click on that, you'll see it's going to uh, reorganize the content and this is called being reactive. This is a reactive interface and it organizes the content into uh, something that looks, hopefully looks better on a mobile device. And this is how you get to be mobile friendly. But now when you look on here, there's some things that are grayed out here that, are, that were actually not grayed out in the desktop view. Well, why is that? Because some things you want to only be visible in mobile some things you only want to be visible on a desktop you don't want to try to take an image that's this big and crush it down to be uh you know a little tiny screen image because the file is going to be big and the load time is going to be slow so you're going to get penalized by the search engines as not being mobile friendly so when you look at the different elements on a web page you have to think about how is this going to impact my page performance and am I going to get ding for it or am I going to get rewarded for it right and when we look at let's find a grayed out element like this map right here that's not full color right you may not be able to tell in the video but I can tell so when I click on it it brings up the um, you know the, the toolbar here uh, let's take a look at the three dots first so you've got all these other settings in here where you can copy the style, which means then you can apply that style to a similar widget. So if it's text, you can apply it to another text widget. You can, uh, this happens to be an image, so you can extend the image styles to other images on the page, or you can even do some things that extend across the entire website. So you kind of have to be careful, right? But look through this and go through every single one of these on a, uh, a page that you're playing with, just to learn what the options do uh, and how they impact what you're trying to work on. Next, click on the module settings, the little gear icon here. And this is gonna bring up a window, which should look familiar to you because this is similar to what we looked at in the other view when we were looking at the old style of editor in the background where we saw the actual grids. And you'll see that we have uh, more options here. We have content, we have design, and we have advanced. And I'm just gonna to jump to the visibility piece here because you can see this is grayed out because every option here is also checked, which is saying, hey, I don't want this image to show on these three different devices, which means that image is not going to show anywhere, right? So I left it there probably thinking I'm not sure if I want to keep it uh, or if I want to use it in the future. So I'm just going to hide it from all views and it will be ignored when you look at it on your phone, tablet or desktop. So it's not going to be visible. But uh, let's go back and look at the content. So uh, we understand what the image is. We can click on the image or we can go to this gear icon, right? And this is going to take us to our media folder. And you would recognize this, this from part one, but when you upload images, they're stored in your, uh, in your media library. And then you could go through and you could click on one of these elements and you could put that element into that particular location. So if I wanted to add... Um, let's, let's see, I'm going to go here and I'll type in map. Okay. Oh, there's the same image. So I'm going to click that just as an example. And you can see how big the image is over here, uh, in, in dimensions, but also in kilobytes. Uh, you want very small images. You don't want to take an image this big when you only need it to display this big, right? 
uh, resize the image down to the smallest size that works for the content. And if you make the image too small, you can't read it. So you don't want to go too small either, but we have options for that. So hang on, I'll show you those in just a minute. You can edit the image here, and this is not a full-blown ed uh, image editor, but you can do some of those types of things here, right? You can change the dimensions a little bit. Uh, you got a URL for the image here in case you wanted to use that URL someplace else. So um, that's a good option, and I'm going to just click update. So it takes me back to the view before. Um, I'm not. Let's see. Let me go back here. Mm, that's really bugging me. <laughs> it's just uh, Divi plugin module pop up includes modules. All right. Well, probably just need to do an update. It'll probably go away. So um, let's see. Oh, uh, I, it opened up in a new tab, so that's no problem. I'm going to just close this tab. I'll go back to the uh, the window here, and you'll notice down here we have alt text. And what is alt text? Alt text is what is displayed if the image cannot be shown. A lot of times you'll get an email and you won't see the image. and You've got to click a button to load the image. The alt text would actually show up where the image is supposed to go until that image loads. And if sometimes an image is blocked by an email server or something, uh, it will, uh, you know, your only chance of getting someone's attention is to have alt text. This information here also signals to the search engines what the image is about. And every time that you can signal to the search engines without being ridiculous about it, then it builds your, your SEO score, right? If you try to game the system, you're going to get beat. You know, there's a lot of smarter people out there than you and I. So don't try to beat the system. Uh, work with the system and try to use best practices and you'll get further ahead. Uh, you can link this image or you can open it in a light box. And what does that mean? That means when you click on the image, it'll actually open up in a, in a window in the browser window called a light box. It's good for uh, images that have text on them and you need someone to be able to see the detail of the text and read it. So you would open it in a light box. If you wanted to link that to another page, you could uncheck that and you could just put a destination link on here, maybe like your contact page or you know another web page on your website that might be interesting or related and then you can decide if you want that to open in the same window or a new tab right um, you can edit the background you can give it an admin label you can do all kinds of crazy stuff uh, you get over here into the, the designer and now you really start to get some options right you can put a drop shadow on it and you'll notice the, and this is called the visual editor because when I clicked it here, you saw the shadow appear over here. So what you do actually appears very quickly after you make the edit. So if I go here to border, let's say, and this little um, chain here is indicating that all of these are linked together. So if I chain, uh, change one, those changes are also going to be made to the others. So see, I, I just clicked it one time. I want to round the corners on this, and this is what I'm doing. And I'm going to do it extreme just so you can see it clearly. Let's round them 50, and look what happens. I can make that into a complete circle. If I go here to, you know, let's try 150. So it's almost a circle. And I can keep doing that. I can also unlink these by clicking that, and I can say, all right, well, I want to make an interesting shape out of this. So I'm going to uh, reduce the rounding on these corners. Now, would I leave that as a website option? No, but you can get the idea of how you can utilize all of these different things, all these different options to create unique content. Margins and padding are very important. You will mess with them over a lot of time. It's probably one of the more challenging things to do to understand how things work. A margin is the spacing between an object and what's around it. Right. So if I want to change the margin between the image and the text at the top, I can go in here and let's put in 200 so it's obvious. And see, it just opened that space wide up. All right. So uh, I can go back in here and I can do, oops, I can do undo. Right. And it'll take it and take it back out. If I was going to do padding, padding is mostly used with text or to create spacing on the inside of an element. So if I wanted to add uh, space between, 
the text and the left edge, right? I wanted to indent my text, so it was maybe over here. What I can do is I can go into the design, and I can go to spacing, and then I can go over to the left, and I can say, hey, I want to indent 50 from the left-hand side, 50 uh, points. And you see it pushed over about 50 points. Um, I can control that on the top or the bottom. It's the inside of that widget. And let me do this real quick for you. So go to background. I'm going to shade that background for you. So you can see that's the widget, right? And this is what I'm adjusting. I'm adjusting what's inside that widget. And this is, this just shows you the total control that you have over all of this type of content. It's really just kind of amazing. Um, if you were to, let's say you want to add a contact form, how do you go about that, right? So you, cr you create the, uh, the area and then you would click on the plus button and then you would uh, get a list of available uh, uh, objects that you, you can insert. So I type in contact, immediately searches contact form. Boom, I can just use the interface to create a contact form and I'll designate an email, which that contact form will be emailed to that email address and I can get it on my phone or wherever and I can follow up with it. Uh, I selected an icon. So, you know, hey, look, let's let's check out an icon. Uh, look at all the icons that are in here. I can, I can select any of these. And then once I select them, then I can start uh, styling them, right? Go back into design. I can align them. Uh, I can change the color on and on and on and on about all of these different types of things. Uh, there is an animation option here, and I will caution you to avoid animations because it really does slow your page down. Things don't load as quickly. There's usually a, an action that's necessary or a time delay that's important to trigger some of those types of things. So be, be leery of using uh, and especially overusing those types of things. So I'm going to close that. Uh, here's, uh, let's see, here's where I actually used and, and kept uh, an image. Let's open this up and take a quick look at, no, let's keep going. All right, let's talk about video. How do you get video? Because you're probably going to be shooting some video if you're building a website. I would say one of the most important things that you can do is put visual uh, content on your site. It's images and it's videos. People want to see what they're getting from you. They want to see your equipment. They want to see you. They want to see the results. And can you deliver, right? So how do you go about adding a video? Well, let's take a look at YouTube, All right? So this is a, a video uh, recently done and you can go into share and you've got a couple different options here. You can go embed and you can get the embed code, right? And I can just hit Control C on my keyboard, and that's going to copy that. I'm going to close that. I can also hit Share, and I can get the Share code here, and I can click Copy. That is also now on my clipboard. So I'm going to move that off the screen, and then I'm going to go over here, and let's add a, a widget. And I'm going to show you two different ways to do it, right? So if I click that button and I type in code, right? Remember I copied the embed code to my clipboard. So I can go up in here and I can hit, and if you don't know this little trick, this is the, this is a great tip. Hold your windows key down and, and click the V button. And what you will see is the last few items that you actually put on your clipboard. It's a great way of, of being efficient when you're moving around your computer. Right? So look, I copied and pasted that in there and look what happens. It draws the video from YouTube and displays it in here and it knows exactly what to do. Right? So that is pretty cool. Uh, I would then still go through the process of determining visibility and, you know, do I, is it the right size? Do I want to uh, put a border on or anything? And I'll tell you, if you don't know, keep it simple, right? Just keep it simple. It's just a better way of doing things. Uh, you can over-design a website fairly quickly. So uh, we'll go back into here, and this time I'm going to I'm gonna hit text. Now if I add media, right, brings up the media player, I can insert media in different locations. Um, 
I actually hit the wrong thing, which I should have done because I wanted to show you both ways. Uh, so we're going to back up just a step. So I'm going to let this load. I'm going to hit delete. I'm going to take it out just as quickly as I added it. And then this time I'm going to click it again. You can, you can, this is another thing. You can click in the text and you can actually edit the text in line. Again, part of the visual editor. editor. Sometimes it gets a little you know, wonky and you've got to kind of click around so you can get the, uh, the right things to show up like this. But once that shows up, let's do that. Which I don't want, but that's okay. Uh, so you want to type in video. And this time, it's saying, hey, look, just give me the URL. Video from URL, right? So I'm going to delete that. Add video and insert from URL. So let's try the share code. See if that works. And it does. Look, there you go. So um, you can also upload small video files like, you know, 10, 20, 30 meg. I think there's there are some limitations on there and actually host them on the uh, web server where your website is being hosted. Um, or you can just simply link up to YouTube, right? Which is how I typically do it. The, the user experience can be a little bit slower that way because it has to load all these things, especially when you go to something like a gallery where you've got uh, a lot of content, you know, a lot of images that, um, that are a little bit larger in file size. And then you've got all these links going out to YouTube saying, hey, come back and give me a, a preview of that video file, right? So you can see I got a slow internet connection today. Um, and one of the tricks that you can do, and let me show you this, I'll show you this on this page, is instead of actually inserting the video code, you can put an, uh, a small image in place and then all you do is you link it to the YouTube video. So it looks like that video is in place, but it's not actually connecting to grab the video, it is just uh, displaying a little image. So if I was going to change this, I would probably, just to make it easy, I'd delete it. And then I would go back and I'd say, all right, let me add it back in. And I would go, I would type in to add an image. All right, so what you'd want to do is you want to find an image that represents or looks like a thumbnail image so let's do something like this and we're going to just fake one right so i'm going to grab this image you can see i've already added the seo uh, terminology here focusing in on ocala chiefland bronson and those areas i'm going to upload that image and i'm guessing that it's going to be way too big it's not too bad if i want to size it i can go into design i can go into sizing and i can enter a percentage like 80%. I want it to be 80% of the widget size that it is in. I'm going to then change the alignment to align it in the center. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to uh, do actually two things. One is uh, I want the entire image linked to the video, not just an icon. So I would go in here and I would add the image URL that I got from, let's say, YouTube. I would stick that in there. And I always want content outside my site to open up on a new tab. I want my website to remain open as long as possible. So I would open up that image when clicked, or open up that URL when clicked in a new browser tab at the top. The next thing that I'm going to do is I've got to signal to people that, hey, there's something here that you may want to click on. So I'm going to go back in and this time I'm going to add an icon like this and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to uh, go to the design component. I'm going to look at icons. I'm not going to do anything special. Whoops. Where are my icons? I'm not going to do anything special with the icons. I just want to find a basic icon, which is where... Let's do Divi icons and let's type in play. Let's see what we get. All right, so we ended up with this arrow. Don't know why, can't explain it, but we're going to change it to a play icon. 
All right, so I'm going to click that, open it up. Click on an icon. Where am I? Where's my icons? Where's my icons? Oh, you need to scroll down. My bad. All right, so this looks like a play button. So I'm going to switch it over to that. Right, and I'll now go over to design, and I want to design the icon. I want it to be orange. Uh, that's not contrasty, so I'm going to go over to, I'm going to click on the orange, and you're going to notice that it's going, actually, uh, when I click the, this color, it changes this color here. Then I click on this, now I start to have more color options over here, right? So I'm going to make it, uh, let's make it red. YouTube's red. There's a visual connection there. Let's do that. Um, I like the icon size, but I could change it if I wanted to. And I'm going to go ahead and collapse that. Um, and then I'm going to play with the spacing. Now, I'm not playing with the padding. I'm playing with the spacing. So if I want to move this up on top of the element above, then what I would do up here, I would go up here. Now I'm going to put a negative number to move up. right? So I'm going to put minus 350. Let's see what happens. All right, well, that element is actually tied to the box below, so I'm going to control Z that. I'm, I'm going to undo that. I'm not going to control Z it, so I put it back. I'm going to hit that, and then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move these elements. And you see the little handlebar that you can get a hold of there? You can move these things around the page, and once you see a gray box, you know that you can drop that element in that new location. Um, so what I'm going to do, actually, instead of putting it to the side, I'm going to put it above up here. And if you hold it there, if your computer's running faster, you'll see that it will open up and show you that you can drop it there. Sometimes you, you think that you can move something, but you can't. You can't move certain elements. Like you can't move a green element into a green element. You can't move a gray box into a gray box. You can move it between gray boxes, but you can't uh, put it inside of another gray box. There are, you know, uh, there is that limitation. All right, so now it's over here. So now let's go back in here. Let's hit on the settings and let's move that arrow, that play button down, right? Let's move it down. So the uh, we want to get into the spacing again. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to move it down, let's say 200. Oops. Let's see. I moved the image. I didn't move the icon. I clicked the wrong, wrong uh, setting. So you see I got it to move, but it's actually underneath this image here. So what would I need to do? I go to advanced and then I go to position and then I can change this element here. 
And now you see it came to the t it came above. This the Z index is layers. Like everything is on layer zero to start with until you overlap something. Then something has to go above or below the other thing, right? And uh, the Z index allows you to you know to mess with that stuff. So if we go back over to spacing, I can see the 150 was okay, but it wasn't nearly enough. So I'm going to jump to 350. And okay, that was too far. I'm going to go back to 250. And, you know, so now it's kind of in the middle, but something else got messed up. And this isn't unusual. Um, I'm not going to take an hour to sort it out with you guys here watching. But what I might have to do is go up here and add a margin up here to push it down. There might be something in this text that's causing a problem where I need to push it down. So you got to play with the margins a little bit. And if you remember, I told you early on, working with margins is one of the one of the things that you will spend a lot of time doing as you work to get proficient in this process. And then, uh, you know, as you make a change, you can come down here and you can hit, hey, I want to save the draft or I want to publish it. And you can check it on mobile and desktop views to make sure that it's going to be, uh, you know, uh, mobile friendly, let's say. OK, so uh, just a couple more things, because this video is going to run long. Uh, I want to show you uh, when you go back to the edit page where we go back to the original Divi Builder and the WordPress section, I want to point out how rank math works. And you've got some other things around the side of the page that are important. Um, let's start with uh, the featured image. When you do a search for a website and the website comes up in the browser and you see a picture, most of the time you're getting the featured image. So you've got to make sure that you have a featured image that you want to use. Something that represents your company, it's, it's okay to put like your brand on the image or your website on the image, things like that. Maybe you're even your phone number on the image if you want. Um, when you look at page attributes, this is how you structure the page. This is where you determine the parent-child relationships in a website. And it, when you get a big site, which most of you won't have because it's really not necessary for a bush hogging business, then you have to provide more structure to the content so you can find things more easily. Then you come up here, uh, they've got some content AI, um, good stuff, new stuff. Uh, it makes some good suggestions. It can help you. And it's one of those things that you'll have to, depending on what you do and how you do it, you'll have to look at it uh, and just kind of experiment with it. You can save a draft, you can publish it immediately, you can edit it, you can, Make it uh, password protected or a private page. If you want someone to look at it before you publish, you can do that. You can also schedule it for a future release if you would like to do that. You can uh, delist something, right? So you can either publish it as a draft pending review or you can send it out to the world by hitting the publish button. It's that simple. Over here, we have Rank Math. So when you install the Rank Math uh, plugin, First of all, you've got lots of options that you need to pay attention to. The dashboard, uh, the general settings, it will actually help walk you through that setup process on first install. But every page that you look at, Rank Math is going to you know, show you how the search engines are going to look at your page. So if I look at this, it says Bush Hogging in Cedar Key, right? And if I look at the URL, Bush Hogging in Cedar Key, I don't remember the page being really about bush hogging and cedar key. So I'm going to hold my control button. I'm going to click this link here and it's going to open up this page in a, uh, a new browser window. All right. So bush hogging and cedar key. I got that part right. Property maintenance services. Uh, what I'm looking for is bush hogging in cedar key, right? Cause this focus keyword was, uh, and this is a blog post. Uh, no, it's a, it is a page. I'm not sure why it's a page versus a blog post, but anyway, I'm signaling to the search engines that this is important to me, bush hogging and cedar key. I'm writing something very specific. So when somebody types that into the URL, I want to be the first one that comes up, right? If I go to, uh, and I'm in edge, you go to Chrome, wherever, and I go to bush hogging services, I'm going to say chiefland. Uh, let's push on services to Cedar Key, right? Let's see what comes up and who comes up. So, bush hogging services Cedar Key, bushhoggingservices.com. So, my 
page was not a perfect match. And I'm also looking at, these are ads, right? These are all paid ads. So actually my website came up number one as the organic, the first organic result, which is great, right? And it actually published a couple of the pages here as well. We got a number two as well. Then Bob shows up. So I've got the number one and two spots because I created a page that was focused very specifically on an area that I want to do business, right? And you look down here and you look for green checks and under, you know, uh, orange and yellow checks and you just expand these things and you look at it and say, okay, well, all right, the focus keyword is not found in the subheading, which is an H2, 3, or 4. All right, so let me go to here and let me go back into edit mode. And I'll show you how to designate an H1, H2, or H3. Typically, you're only going to use H1s, and you only use one H1 per page. And then your uh, headings going down the page are H2s. So instead of saying property maintenance services here, First of all, let's highlight that. Let's take let's take a look at the text and see how the text is, text is designated. So I got to click off here, and then I got to come back over. And I think my computer is getting slower. Click on this right on the editor icon. It's now going to pull up the little editor window for this, and I'm going to see properties maintenance service. Now see. When I highlight that, I can then go here and I can say, is this H1, H2, H3? Well, I'm going to say it's H2, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, come on, let's cooperate. Bush hogging services. And Chiefland. So right now that's just plain paragraph text as indicated up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that text and I'm going to change that to an H2. And that's what it looks like. Well, how do I know what, how it's formatted? Well, if I go over to the design section and I go to heading text, you see I can edit the text by the heading level. So if I go to H2 and I select that and I go over here and now let's say I want to make that text blue. I changed it to blue. I can change it back to black. Just that easy. All right, so I just check that box. I would have to hit save, which I'm going to exit since it's just uh, a training. Save and exit. And it's not going to update. I'd have to refresh this page after that page finishes loading, and then that might remove that particular error. But I can look right down this page, and I can figure out what are the different things that Rank Math is telling me that I need to do. The next thing is I need to edit the snippet, and this is what shows up in the search results. So the 10 best you know, uh, clearing services near me, and this little description down here is uh, exactly what we're looking at when we go here and say, okay, well, this is the, uh, hmm. uh, put my phone number right in there. Why make people dig around? You know, let's try to give it to them right up front. So this would be the title that would be equivalent to this right here, the big letters. And then we go here and we say, okay, well, what's the description? This part here is equivalent to what we have down here, right? That's the description on this particular website. Um, this would be the description on our website right here, right? So those are th those two things are very important. It tells you how long the text should be. It gives you some ideas of what should be in the text. And then I take this text here, I copy it, and I go up here and I go to the excerpt and I should have pasted it in there. Uh, these things, by the way, you can move up and down by clicking these different arrows. So you can reposition them on the page. You can collapse the boxes, right? If this is something that you're not going to use a lot, like if you go down here to the bottom, you'll see, all right, there's not even any down here. But if there were more options on this uh, view here, then I could push them to the bottom of the page if I wanted 
you know, uh, some history or Divi page settings or something like that, I can order them on the page so it's convenient for me. So that is a back-end overview, and it's been a long video, so I'm, I'm going to break it here. If you get, uh, if you have questions and things like that, and I see enough of the same questions, I'll do another video. But I hope this has opened your eyes to opportunities for you to get into managing your own web presence. Uh, if you use a, a service like Wix or some other online tool, that's great too. Those things will work. You're not going to get all the SEO value that you might otherwise in a very competitive environment, but they still provide a viable platform where if you go out and create video content, you write blogs, you update images and things like that, you will get uh, recognized for that uh, in the area, right? You may not ever get to number one, but you might get to number four, number seven, something of that nature. And oftentimes that's going to be good enough to get a phone call from people that potentially want your services. So, um, you know, I, I hope you gained something. Thank you for your attention uh, to this video. If I can help, you know, ask a question below. I'll do my best if I can. And otherwise, just get out there and try something. You know, you weren't always doing bush hogging, but you went out and tried. Don't be afraid of technology. Get out there and try. And uh, who knows, maybe you'll be building your own websites before too long. Thank you and have a great day.